Hi guys, welcome back to another fragrance video on my channel and thanks so much for tuning in again. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you about the brand new Viking Cologne by the House of Creed, which is a brand new, that is 2021 release and flanker of the original Viking by Creed. Now, first of all, this is the second release that they added to their collection with the Cologne uh, addition to their name. And the first one was Aventus Cologne, which I, I believe I also reviewed on this channel. At least I did it in German. And I remember that I bought the whole bottle, so the full bottle, because I really thought that it was a cool design. You know, it was a gray bottle and it was matte and stuff. And I was really um, excited for this fragrance. And then I noticed that it was pretty much an Eau de Cologne type uh, fragrance. So a very light, citrusy, summery type fragrance that I enjoyed for quite some time, but I felt that it wasn't enough for the price that I paid. So I got rid of it pretty quickly afterwards and sold it again. And to me, it didn't really have too much in common with the original Aventus. And it felt like Creed was going even more in a mainstreamish direction with this release. And now I'm sitting here a couple of years later with the Viking Cologne, which is another um, one of their flankers of their popular fragrances. Now, I don't know if Viking was actually that popular because Aventus like kicked everything out of the bucket, you know, but I liked it. I liked Viking because it was a sandalwood minty combination, kind of oriental, but still kind of Western type and really like nothing I ever smelled before, you know, so it was really like new and, and stuff and I enjoyed it. So I thought, well, why don't I just get the Viking Cologne version and see what it's all about. Now, first of all, this is a typical Eau de Cologne one as well. So it smells really like we say here in Germany, Echt Kölnisch Wasser, which is actually the origin of Eau de Cologne. So there is a category of fragrances that has a very light fragrance oil concentration in it, between two and five percent that is called Eau de Cologne. And why is that the case? Well, because it is from Cologne here in Germany. So Köln, Kölnisch Wasser means uh, water of Cologne uh, in English and Eau de Cologne in French. So that's where it comes from. And Eau de Cologne is typically a very light citrusy fragrance that doesn't last very long and that's just there to refresh you and just give you a fresh citrusy kick. And that's what both Aventus Cologne and Viking Cologne are all about. So Aventus Cologne was also a very light citrusy fragrance and this one is as well, but it still has some of that Viking DNA. That means it has some sandalwood as you will see when I tell you about the fragrance notes. And I believe that it also has some minty notes. So it really has some of that character of the original Viking when it dries down. And that's really kind of interesting. So now let me tell you about the fragrance notes. We have citrus, bergamot, mandarin, and pink pepper in the top notes. In the heart, we have lavender, geranium, nutmeg, rosemary, and salvia. And in the base, we have sandalwood, incense, patchouli, cedarwood, and vetiver. So on one hand, we have those citrus notes in the top, as well as lavender and geranium in the heart, which are both typical cologne type fragrance notes. So eau de cologne type fragrance notes, if you will. And on the other hand, we have um, sandalwood in the base, as well as I believe some mint is also in there because I really smell some minty touch in there. So we still have this Viking type DNA on the other hand. Now, one thing that I really enjoy about this fragrance is that you can actually smell the fragrance that it originated from. So you can really smell the sandalwood and some of that minty sandalwood DNA that made Vikings so awesome. Uh, in contrast to Aventus Cologne, where it wasn't really like you were smelling some of that um, pineapple and birch tar kind of thing that wasn't really there. And it was really just a citrusy, uh, just a citrusy mix, I believe. So that's what I kind of enjoy about this is that if it dries down, which happens really quite quickly, uh, that you smell some of that Viking DNA with some citrusy top notes. And it's also really very fresh. So in the first few minutes or in the first hour or so, 
it's really a fresh citrusy kick. So if you like citrusy fragrances and you like to wear them in the summer or something, then that's uh, like really, really good. And I can totally imagine myself wearing this in the summer as a very light fragrance that's only going to like give me some refreshment or something, you know? So that's really what it's what it's intended to be. And, um, and I think it does so really quite well. Of course, longevity and projection aren't as great as with an Eau de Parfum concentration. So I believe that the fragrance oil concentration in this is also pretty low because it doesn't really last very long and it's just it's it's just a very typical eau de colonial you know so it vanishes pretty quickly and it's like those aqua di palma type fragrances which all don't last very long except for the ones in the darker bottles so it's also a very light fragrance and it's perfect for the summertime however there is one thing i can say because i just shot my german review and i just happened to check the price of this thing and it seems that it's around 200 bucks for 50 mils which is absolutely insane i didn't really expect this and i was super shocked when i found out because honestly i feel that this is a little bit of a high price to pay for this type of dna on one hand and also for this type of longevity and performance in general on the other so I Actually, it's even worse than the two Amouage fragrances that I reviewed in my last video. If you haven't seen that, check it out uh, in the info card up here. But uh, I feel that this is like really a very high price for what you for what you're getting because it's not a super unique DNA. It's just Viking basically with some citrus added in the top notes, and then it doesn't even last as long. So that's like a really high price. And there is a ton of different fragrances that do the same thing and that you have to pay less for. So for example, Gentle Fluidity Silver by Maison Francisco Jan is a really, really great cologne type fragrance, I feel. Then there is also the whole Aqua di Parma line. They have like 20 different fragrances that essentially are the same. Um, they have excellent Eau de Cologne type fragrances actually and you should definitely check them out if you are looking for something like this and i'm pretty sure they retail for about half of the price so that's like a really very high price to pay even if you consider that citrus notes aren't too expensive of an ingredient in general so they are really quite cheap and which is why they are so widely used so I don't really feel that this is like living up to uh, to the price that you would pay for it. However, if you enjoy cologne type fragrances, you should definitely try this one as a sample first. Maybe get a sample of this and then really think about if you want to invest this kind of money. Because I feel that for a cologne, it's really quite good because it has this interesting Viking type dry down. But I wouldn't pay full price for this just because it's Creed. I don't really think so. And... I think they could do something about their price politics because if you, for example, look at uh, the brand of Tom Ford, they have also been super crazy in terms of their price recently with recent releases. But if you look at their Eau de Toilette concentration ones like Eau de Soleil Blanc or, or even the blue ones that are also Eau de Toilette concentration, they lowered the price for the Eau de Toilette one. So, so to them, I believe it was clear that if you release a weaker concentration version of one of your fragrances, that you just lower the price because everything else wouldn't just make any sense. And it would have been great if Creed had done the same with this one or the Aventus Cologne one. But anyways, guys, if you like colognes, get a sample and try it. I think it's quite nice, but as I said, totally overpriced. And of course, the question of the day is, have you tried this fragrance? Please let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. I'm super excited to read everything that you have to say about this fragrance. If you like this video, leave me a thumbs up. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.